Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Hollow and today we're talking about upcoming MMORPGs because lately I've been seeing a lot of talk about new MMOs and I've even made a few videos myself. So today I thought it was a good idea to check in with the five main MMOs that I'm most excited for and where they're each currently at. Let's get started with the one that I've been covering a lot here on Rage Gaming, Blue Protocol. Probably my most anticipated MMO coming next. Blue Protocol is an upcoming MMORPG developed and published by Bandai Namco, filled with monsters infesting the land and threatening the world, set in a colourful and anime-esque visual style with that third-person action-focused combat. Blue Protocol reminds many of us, in fact, of Sword Art Online's original MMO setting in all the best ways, without that kind of bad story. The action-focused combat requires accurate swinging and aiming to land blows. You got well-timed dodges, even parrying on some classes. With build and spend systems, a whole summoning system to bring allies into combat known as Imogen to help you out depending on what you need. Big powerful ultimates, a big talent tree system that lets you adapt and modify the very way your abilities work. Plus, you've got solo and group dungeons, gauntlets, world mini-bosses or full-on big bosses, raiding, and the arena too. It's a very PvE focused MMO and I've had the chance to play it in closed beta on Japanese servers and had a really really good time and I made a full video about my experiences with that and my thoughts on that if you want to check that out. However the massive downside to this game is that it's currently a Japanese only title set to release globally after the original game is certainly on its way. Still in that development process the first beta has only happened recently so we have a way to wait on this one. Obviously I'm very happy with the game that we played but I did have some concerns too after the beta and the devs compiled all major feedback from this first beta and addressed it in this insane post. It was massive, avoiding nothing and taking on board the many main issues brought up by the community. Plus, in this address we heard about new features coming to the game like new classes, system overhauls and much more and I made a whole video about that too if you want to hear about that. Generally though, it was crystal clear these are passionate devs and want the game to be a success after it launches. However, when it does come to what is next for Blue Protocol, the news is unfortunately sad news, but understandable. They're officially putting their heads down and working on developing the game now, adding massive amounts of content and refining those systems they talked about. They have no plan for the next beta as they go into a development focused state and eventually they'll come back with whatever they've created. I obviously have every faith in these devs to do great work from my time playing the beta and the appreciation for the way they've taken on feedback to better this game and honest about what's next for the game each major step of the way. I really look forward to whenever they do come back to us with fresh news and I certainly will be talking about it here on the channel whenever they do. Now let's talk about an MMO we haven't had a chance to play while it's currently in development Crimson Desert, a new MMORPG from Pearl Abyss in a new land and style for this team, more story focused in its campaign and much more focused on endgame PvE than their original MMO Black Desert Online. A controversial game in itself due to its infinite grind leaning on pay to win mechanics. The game itself is undeniably good, the combat is incredible, the PvP is solid, the many many progression systems are interesting and varied, it's just that it does suffer from that infinite grind and those pay to win elements associated. I've never seen a game so widely enjoyed and hated at the same time. Some of the reviews out there are hilarious for Black Desert. I've seen people telling others to not play the game and how they absolutely hate it while they have over 2000 hours played. For any game that is insane value, even if maybe eventually you found out you just didn't enjoy Endgame and stopped playing. Black Desert is still a massive massive MMO currently that has a huge active player base and that's for a reason. So with all that in mind, let's talk about Crimson Desert, that follow-up title from Pearl Abyss. Now from the trailer and information we got back last year, we know this game is going to be much more story focused, all around five major characters whose fates seem linked with one another. We see a lot of cinematic moments from that story and in the trailer we have glimpses of the more detailed and refined world compared to Black Deserts. It seems like a healthy progression for the devs to go this route as they focus more on P PvE experiences and telling a proper interesting story because well yeah 
Black Desert's original story was forgettable at best, and I hope they do a better job now. Naturally, with that, we can certainly expect top-tier Black Desert combat in this world, with crisp visuals and animations just set in that new northern environment, with a more engaging questing system and that single-player campaign for the story itself. That's actually interesting, isn't it? An MMORPG with a single-player personal storyline. The only time I've ever done this before is in Star Wars The Old Republic, where you had varied stories personal to you and your choices depending on your faction and class, which worked really well, and I still look back on those stories very fondly. I love them. So I wonder if Pearl Abyss can do something similar with Crimson Desert. We're expecting a beta for the game sometime this year, but we haven't had any direct word on the game in a little while now. We just know that it's being developed for console release alongside PC. So that gives you an idea, right? Maybe they're waiting for the new PlayStation and Xbox systems to release before they do the beta for this game. I'm always on the lookout for new Crimson Desert news though, so be sure to look out for my video whenever we do get some. With those two promising MMOs out the way, let's talk about a much more questionable MMO that's been right around the corner for a while. New World. This is made by Amazon Studios and will be their second major title to launch under this banner. Having said that, they've cancelled one of their original titles that was planned this year and then they released Crucible which went back into closed beta and ongoing development since they released it uh, a little too early. Almost in an alpha like state its player base dropped to below 200 and was absolutely panned for its unfinished state. It certainly had some good ideas and I appreciate those, but it completely failed to follow through on the concepts that it put forth. And then we have this much, much bigger project coming in about a month in August, New World, their MMORPG. Basically though, my major concern for New World is that I don't think it's finished or even close. And they're about to launch this game, or at least they were. As I was making this very video, talking about my concerns about it not really being ready for release, New World's release date has been delayed again. They're sending it all the way back to spring 2021, spring next year. Now that is a delay. I have no memory of a delay being this big in one chunk of any game. And an MMO of this size? Wow. That means they were really about to release another completely unfinished game, weren't they? I was still hopeful for this game due to the many interesting progression systems of which they have five major ones they're working on, where we have weapon systems to replace classes, letting you continually improve specific weapons, unlocking passives and abilities until, say, a level cap, and then you work on the skill with other weapons after, letting you swap between weapons in a hybrid style of play instead of forcing you into one category. They got that massive world and its inviting and well mysterious story, the three major factions with their very awesome aesthetics. The guilds, or known as companies, can literally control land for crazy bonuses and big PvE or even PvP battles for that territory, in a sort of Rust style. To say the least, they've got a lot of cool and interesting systems planned for the game, and I'm still hopeful for it, more so after I sat down and watched some real non-scripted gameplay, which looked really good to me, even better than the official trailers. How did that happen? Just like Crucible though, the game is still under NDA and was still meant to be under NDA until the playable beta that was meant to come up in just a few weeks. Now, however, though, we're going to be able to play the game for a limited time a bit later, starting on August 25th, if you pre-ordered the game, or maybe even played in the alphas. What's weird about this, though, is that I doubt the game we play in August will actually be much like the game we're going to be playing next year, so... What's the point? Once again though, feel free to check out my most recent video on New World if you want more details and info about the game and what a roller coaster New World actually seems to be. At very least, I am glad that they've decided to delay it and I'm glad they've decided to finish the game before they launch it. So let's move on and talk about something new, something upcoming that we've recently had more and more information about. And hey, it even looks like a well-realized and finished game, crazy. I'm talking about Core Punk, an MMORPG with a more MOBA style to its combat and movement that's been in development for over five years now. A top-down MMO action RPG with that more and more popular isometric camera these days, set in a large open world where we explore it with a fog of war mechanic those dark and unexplored areas we can't quite see until we step into it, just like a MOBA. Carpunk's world features lots of varied lands, towns, and cities to meet other players or grab your quests. The world is big enough to validate transportation for bigger journeys too.
2, which is a good sign. The game plans to launch with 12 classes with three weapon specs each that each come with their own style of play and abilities. There's varied customization with the weapons and armor and the talent system each character has access to. Plus, just like Marmite, you might love or hate this, it's got open world PvP, which is great for a game in 2020 because so many devs seem to be pulling away from this concept and I really like it. But also for more dedicated PvP situations, there's going to be arenas, battlegrounds for smaller scale skill combat or phase big battles. For PvE, we've got dungeons, which feature many, many different puzzles to solve, big bad boss fights in those dungeons too, with different mechanics to deal with, and of course, the much more harder and end game focused raiding. As you'd expect in any MMO, there's also professions like gathering and crafting to be working on for different benefits. And as you can see, like I mentioned with the fog of war mechanic, this is really like a MOBA MMO. The movement is much slower paced, more measured, specific. The combat is the same. The abilities are less three flow, spammy or hack and slashy. It's more like intentional. It's got a very different pace compared to games you might have seen like this. But what I hope comes across here is that it's a very unique game and seems extremely polished. This is a fleshed out and thought out and well, promising game that I think looks quite good. So just a few weeks ago, we had gameplay from IGN Summer of Gaming, 15 whole minutes to watch some new alpha gameplay, and an interview with Eugene Kiva, the producer for Corpunk. He described the game as a traditional MMO, without instance-based worlds. You could randomly encounter whoever from the thousands of other players on your server, rather than set in layers or sessions. And finally, this is brilliant news, Eugene expressed his distaste for other MMOs that have too much focus on the level to max level, and then very little endgame content, especially at launch. He's described Corpunk as a game in two main chunks. 40% of the game will be the journey to max level, and then the remaining 60% is all about the endgame content. That's their layout at launch, that's brilliant news. So it's certainly a well thought out and well fleshed out upcoming MMORPG, with a unique style to its movement and combat, which I expect will turn some people off, but hopefully bring some people heavily in. And when I first saw it myself, I felt like it looked a bit too slow. But after learning more and more about the game and hearing just how considered every aspect of this game seems to be, I trust them that this is the way to go for Call Punk, and I, I want to try it before I properly pass judgment. I might not like it, but I want to give it a go, and I might end up loving it. In that regard, there's meant to be an open beta in the final quarter of 2020, so, you know, not too far away, just a few months, while the closed beta you need to sign up for should be coming very soon, perhaps even in a matter of weeks. But either way, I'm certainly impressed by Core Punk. It almost went completely under my radar, and I'm really glad that I saw it. So hopefully I can make an in-depth video for you guys if I do get to play in the beta. And now finally, our last upcoming MMO on this list, Lost Ark. I really can't talk about upcoming MMOs that I'm looking forward to without talking about Lost Ark, because I've made multiple videos about this game, like when the global release is coming, or different classes or aspects of the game. I've sat down and watched Russian streamers play this game recently just to see what some of the systems are actually like in play, and it looks really good. So firstly, let me tell you what this game is. Lost Ark is a Korean-made isometric camera action-focused RPG. That's right, two isometric camera MMOs are on this list, I told you they're popular these days. In stark contrast to Core Punk, this game is very fast paced, flashy and intense in its combat. It is hack and slashy in nature with incredible animations on tons and tons of abilities in your arsenal. There's already a massive list of classes, up to 19 now, that have been steadily improved and added to over the duration of this game's launch, which just so happens to already be out and has been for years. You see, it's a Korean MMO, which has now launched in Japan, China, and even Russia, as I mentioned not too long ago, and has been confirmed for a Western release. They're actually working on that right now, and with the experience they have in releasing the game in different regions multiple times, I actually have very high hopes for the global release being solid, and hopefully soon. As an MMORPG though, it has a lot to offer. A dedicated story as you're leveling up, each main class comes with its own unique story and starting region to progress through before you pick up your main subclass permanently. There's a crazy character creator as you'd expect in any Eastern MMO these days. The raw combat itself is nuts, the class designs are all very varied and super different from one another, but the combos and abilities and animations are insane. Each class gets its own ultimate ability, and the one that I talked about most recently, the Scouter, suits him up and overcharges all of his former abilities, so he starts shooting beams, cannon blasts like it's nothing, and zipping around at Mach 10 speed. It's one of those games that you can spend hours and hours and hours just 
practicing different moves, combo strings, just for the animations or satisfying change you can pull off. But with that nice combat is certainly the whole MMO. It's a big end game with PvE raids, world bosses, world events like the Chaos Gates or even the Infinity Tower System 2. It's got dedicated PvP with arenas for 1v1s or group battles that kind of reminds me of Black Desert in its play. And on top of all of that, you got the life skills for professions, which lets you do your various gathering or crafting for the benefits, but they do come with talents that you can spend to improve that experience. So if you're a miner, you could unlock mining bombs to instantly clear up nodes instead of the usual slow mining. In the trailers, we've also seen ship combat or exploration, and even a special island for player housing too. The game has been active for years and seen multiple big content updates already. The question I keep wondering though is when this game does eventually come to the West, will we see all of that at launch or will they release that content at an accelerated rate to catch up with the original Korean servers over time? Whatever the case, it is a big game and one I've been looking forward to for years. And because we finally got that global confirmation at last, I am more than ready to finally play this game. If you are interested in Lost Ark, I've made multiple videos about it here on the channel, so you can check those out if you wanna. All right, finally, that's the five MMOs I'm most interested and excited for that are all upcoming and some details about each. A couple of them I've had a chance to play already and some of them we're still waiting for. Lost Ark and Blue Protocol are coming to the West soon, both looking very solid as MMOs. Core Punk is right around the corner and I'm excited to see if that movement and combat feels good. Then there's Crimson Desert, which is still an unknown since we're waiting for new details that should be coming very soon. And then New World with its entire year delay. What do you think about each of these games? Is there one that you're most excited for? Let me know if there's any MMOs that I should be looking at coming soon maybe that I haven't talked about today. I'm always on the lookout and you guys could help me out. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, and I'll see you next time.